So this is my first ride in a cruise self-driving car here in Austin. I'm gonna record the whole ride in this direction. I'm just waiting for the car to show up here on the street. It told me to walk a little bit. Uh, it should be coming from this direction. So. Ah, oh, there it is. I see it coming around the corner. So we'll see how easy this is. And as I said, I'll record the whole drive. Here's the car. Okay. Oh. It's running away. <laughs> it didn't like the uh, location, so I guess I gotta walk. A little bit here. Alright, so it didn't like where, it didn't like that street, maybe because I got too close to it too quickly, and it decided to pull around to the other side, so we'll unlock the doors here. As you can see, no one in there. Unlock the doors. So we'll hop in. Um, Hi there. Take a seat in the back and buckle up. Start okay. your ride from the tablet in the car. Gotta buckle up, so... Actually checks to make sure I'm buckled up it looks like okay now we're gonna do the start the ride okay here we go app feedback a few things to remember during your ride please keep your seat belt buckled obviously always keep your hands and arms inside yep So this is going to be about 18 minute ride. Uh, the view from back here is not the best. Let me just try to center this a little bit better. Drop off in 18 minutes. So what we're doing is we're just taking a ride through Austin here. I decided to kind of take it almost the full distance that it can go to get uh, a feel for how it's going to handle like all these streets with cars on it uh, to handle you know, maybe a little bit more congested streets, residential areas. It does seem to be choosing to take a less congested route. I'm assuming that's on purpose. So it's not going the most direct way that I would you know, normally take for this drive. And this is, I believe, a Bolt. So, which the back seat is bigger than I remember when I test drove one years ago. Maybe I should have sat in the center, it would have been easier to record this. But each, I guess each side has a uh, its own touch screen. I guess, I don't know if each one can control the radio, but there are settings. Let's see what the settings are on the car. Oh, I can just change the temperature. Let's see. So 68, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll do that. So here we are, we're gonna... The ride's been pretty good so far. I mean, obviously there hasn't been much traffic, but I definitely haven't uh, felt unsafe at any point. Man, this thing's tearing through some bumpy back roads here in Austin. <laughs> uh, so the, the Bolt's ride is not the best, but it's doing a pretty good job. We got oncoming traffic. We got a bunch, well, maybe, I guess maybe a bunch of cars are doing this. It didn't like the, like what the car was doing over there. I'm not sure what, but now it seems to think it's okay. Maybe the the bump on the road confused it. It maybe saw something it, it uh, didn't, didn't like somewhere. 
So we're gonna kind of hunker down here, see if we can get a better view out of the front. Oh, interesting. It decided to stop and let that car proceed, which it didn't need to do. Definitely did not. I think we had the right of way there. Um, I think possibly this thing is gonna really tear through some of the bumpier roads and stuff. Okay, so it's turning right, which is correct. And I will say Austin has some crazy roads in places. So this is a fairly narrow street it decided to go down. Um, we're kind of, actually we're going right through West Campus, which isn't, in my opinion, the easiest route to get where we need to go. Um, that is a stop sign, okay. So it did stop correctly. I think that was a stop sign. I don't know why the other direction is gonna stop. Maybe this is a one way. Oh, that could be why it went down here. Maybe there's something that prefers one way streets because then it doesn't have to deal with oncoming traffic. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna hit this, this stop sign. Now this is not the busy street around here, but this is actually, I mean, all of West Campus is not my favorite area to drive through, which there's another cruise car going the same route. So there must be some preferred streets that they like to take. Maybe they have mapped out some streets that have lower traffic in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far, other than the weird, like I guess I had that weird stop once and it didn't like where it told me to go meet it. Other than those two things, so far, so good. And we're about, as you can see here on the on the drive, we're about halfway, halfway there. We'll take a look out the side mirror here, or the side window. So this one is, is it trying to take a left or a right? It is trying to take a right. And it is a little, it is a little nervous, but it's going. It was, <laughs> it, it, it wanted to make sure that the humans, uh, we're uh, we're not going anywhere. Now it's going to take a left down this street. So we'll see how it how it does. It's checking for people. We have onlookers looking at the uh, cruise taxi <laughs> college students that are interested in the self driving car. Obviously, um, probably my next one is I'll take the car back up to campus and see what. Uh, you know, what we see on there. And now we're gonna go right. All right, we're gonna wait for the uh, pedestrian, which is good, we don't wanna run anyone over. Another pedestrian. This is wild. So this is my first time driving in a fully self-driving car or riding in a fully self-driving car. I wasn't able to go in any on uh, my previous trips to California. And it is definitely a cool experience. People are obviously interested in the, uh, in the car. And it wasn't too bad. That was a pretty congested intersection. So now we're moving along again. I think it's a little bit optimistic on how long it's gonna take, although uh, maybe, maybe it's maybe it's right on, maybe it knows. So it did, I mean, again, this is, you know, West Campus, not my favorite spot to be driving a car by any means, but they probably have some, you know, specific streets that they, uh, again, like to drive on. with the, you know, there's probably streets that they know their cars work a little bit better on right now. There's a fairly limited area that it um, is mapped out or allowed for driving with the, with the car. I guess the car thought maybe it could go. We actually have a red light. I don't know, it, it inched up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but still a red light there. Um, 
it did scooch up a little bit. And we got, okay, now it's our turn, so we're gonna go. And let's see what it does with this. Ooh, okay. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't exactly sure if it was gonna move over or what, but it did. It is, it's almost like a uh, driving, maybe, I imagine that kind of riding with this is maybe like a uh, teenager that's driven for a little while, but is still, uh, you know, not 100% confident in exactly what to do. So we're going to take a left-hand turn at a stop sign, which I assume is on purpose that it's a four-way stop so that other cars are going to stop for it too. Oh man, there's some rough potholes and it is a bolt so it's not got some serious suspension by any means but seven minutes supposedly till we drop off and I just uh, chose the double tree which is on the north side of downtown I could have went further downtown but I didn't want to you know, maybe maybe I'll do that on the weekend when there's a lot of traffic and stuff and we'll see what the how the car handles it. So now we're creeping out through the intersection and it doesn't like the fact that there's a guy kind of crossing in the middle of the street in front of it, but we're on campus, so or we're near campus. And it did a pretty good job with the uh you know, all the two-way traffic and kind of tight streets in here. Okay. So now we're, and the, the ride may look a little bit smoother on here because I'm using a gimbal, um, but it, uh, these streets in Austin, man, I feel like they've gotten worse. And we are, so we're maybe around 20th street. Yeah, we're around 20th street, I think ish and so we're gonna actually have to go take a left onto MLK I wonder if there's gonna be a um, a light there a lot of people looking at the uh, self-driving car I guess right now, if you want to arrive and have everyone look at you, you can, if you take the, <laughs> the self-driving car to your destination. And, oh yeah, it's waiting for the pedestrian, which is good. We don't want to run anyone over. Well, there's a lot of construction down here. I guess I haven't been on campus for a while. So it's dodging what looks to be the, a can in the street. I think it moved around the can, or maybe it moved around the, uh, kind of cars that were parked a little bit out so oh yeah so it went here because it's a stoplight drop off in three minutes so we're almost there actually this is cool one thing I would say is the fact that it didn't like picking me up on that street even though no one was there maybe it got freaked out by the fact I walked up to it too quickly but um, it is kind of inching up. I don't know if it's inching up to maybe get a better view of the cross traffic, but I noticed this at another at the other stoplight is when it was red, it liked to inch up a little bit. Um even though like it can't go anywhere. And it's still like inching up a little bit. I don't know. And let's see how much range we have. 72 miles, max 84. Is this? That's not many miles. Actually range for an electric car. Maybe it's mostly just sitting and that's why it's range meter is all the way messed up. All right, so we're green, let's go. Did a good job. Could've went to P. Terry's down here, I guess, maybe. Maybe that's what I'll do this weekend, even though I'm not supposed to be having any P. Terry's, but that would be kind of a fun thing to do at night. 
go down and get a few Terry's in the self-driving car. And actually, a P. Terry's on campus, that's a smart place to put it, put one. Uh, which for those of you not from Austin or Texas, P. Terry's is a local uh, burger place. I like the burgers a lot. I feel like the quality to cost ratio is pretty good. So, got bumpy road. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, so instead of taking left, look at this. So instead of taking left, it's gonna do a loop around and then come back, which I guess is much easier. So this is not bad. It said 18 minutes. It actually did it in uh, less time, it looks like, or we'll see how long it takes to drop me off. But I have a, I have a feeling on 15th Street, it's not gonna drop me off on the, on the road. It's gonna decide to uh, spin me around the uh, uh, the block so I may have to walk a little bit further but I didn't I will say I didn't feel unsafe at any point now we weren't going any highways or having to merge into any traffic but I felt like the car did a pretty good job in most cases I mean there was the I guess the weird thing where it kind of I guess decided to move over a little bit later than I would have but there was no abrupt braking or anything. No, like, uh, uh, unusual acceleration. It did... I guess here, it's probably not going to go right on red, even though it could. Um, it's going to wait for the green, yeah. So, it, obviously, it's kind of... That's probably why it's driving it only at night, is because it's programmed to take these weird routes that... with. A ton of traffic on the road might cause some issues so and this kind of plexiglass shield is a bit annoying for taking videos so that's gonna get all scratched up in the We're future soon. Yep. Please stay buckled up until we stop and grab all your things and I'm probably gonna have to exit out the other door cuz and yeah it's nice that it reminds you so it has this thing where it reminds you we can look at while we're stopping light mode brightness temperature so you can select your what temperature you prefer in the car. You can end the ride if for some reason you need to get out early or you don't feel safe or anything, which is a smart thing to do. And it does remind you to grab all your stuff because the self-driving car doesn't want to be tooling around with your, with your stuff in it. And I'm wondering if it's just gonna like stop with, I'm guessing it's gonna pull around the corner, so. So I guess 18 minutes is all, like it probably could have gotten here a little bit quicker if it had taken the, and it loves creeping up at red lights, I guess, which is a little bit unusual, but let's see if it decides to stop here or if it decides to go around the block. Okay. We were right. Check for bikes and cars as you exit and Right. We're getting out. There's our car. Bye. Let's see if I have to. I'd give it five stars. So I guess the car, the car gets rated, just like a Uber driver. So there you have it. That is the first ride in a cruise self-driving car. I'm actually gonna take another video where I call it back and have it drop me somewhere else.